NanoX is, you know, the perfect, the perfect company for today's IPO market. Zero revenues, a product that doesn't yet exist, and a new acronym to divide some sort of SaaS type metric that sounds super sexy. What they claim it is, is a CT scanner, an x-ray device, and an MRI all in one. We actually think it's, at best, a rubbish version of one of the three of those. The things we look for, technology claims that are too good to be true, creative CEOs that can't answer a straight question, and incentive structures that are just egregious. It didn't take us long. We got uh, into the prospectus and pretty quick we were finding red flags all over the place. Compensation was a pretty obvious area where these guys were just gouging investors with cheap warrants. And then on top of that, we started to look through the investor profiles and the claims they were making in the tech and it was just, it was unbelievable. These guys were claiming they were gonna combine an X-ray machine with an MRI, with a mammogram, all for $10,000, like, just can't be done. So the CEO is great. There's these amazing videos online, super charismatic guy, rolling every cliche imaginable about Israeli tech and changing the world off his tongue. Problem is, when you actually start to look into his background, other than creating that cool little map thing that charges your phone in Starbucks, he doesn't really have a degree in anything related to medical, physics, or electrical engineering. In fact, we're quite surprised to find that his degree was in arts and he didn't even complete it. By the time this thing got to IPO, it was gonna be some combination of an X-ray, an MRI, and a CT scanner, all in one. Uh, I think at one point they were claiming it was gonna fit inside a briefcase, but, uh, they realized that was gonna be an obvious tell. So the CFO walks away from a pretty chunky options package. Like, it happens from time to time. The real tell with the CFO for us was when you went back and you looked on his LinkedIn and he said that his key role in the company was preparing the prospectus. And then he left a few weeks before that document was prepared. That was a major red flag. In terms of compensation, these guys were real pigs when it came to options. We found one guy who was a uh, Korean national. He was actually affiliated with SK Telecom, who were one of the parties that had signed an agreement with Nanox. He gets a warrant package struck at $2.21 per share. Now, when the stock's reaching like $35, $40 a share, and I, I think he's got around one to 1.2 million options, his option package is worth like $35, $40 million. A lot of money, so you ask yourself, what's he doing for it? Well, he's listed as a consultant. The joke of it is, you go to the website, you look through the presentations, and you can't find this guy anywhere. So what we suspect is that this might have been some sort of wink-wink, nudge-nudge. You get a nice option package, SK Telecom makes an investment, and we look much more credible. One of my favorite little clips on the CEO is when he's been interviewed by Korean TV. There he is throwing off every cliche about great Israeli entrepreneurs, and he's actually asked a pretty straight question by the interviewer as to how the product works. Instead of giving a straight answer, he starts babbling on about how Thomas Edison invented the light bulb and how this is the LED. It was just insane. It's very rare that you start looking at something and things become worse and worse. Typically, you have an idea of what something is and it actually is not quite as bad as that. This is one of the rare cases where things got worse and worse to the point where what you thought was achievable from a you know, fraud standpoint five hours ago, like takes a leap and bound. So I'll give you an example. 
we first started looking at some of the partners and it was quite clear that the Israeli guys who were running a business in Ladam that were one of their partners was suspect. Hadn't even occurred to us to look at the Italian partner because the website was actually somewhat legitimate looking. So we go to the Italian partner, pull the local filings and find out that the alleged contract value with Nanux is going to be some multiple of historical revenue. Then when we get to the South African guy, really takes the biscuit. We find a dude who's on Facebook who had previously worked at a medical distributor who is supposed to be registered to an entity called Gold Rush in a hut in a pretty hostile South Africa. In fact, it was so hostile the place it was in, our investigator refused to go there during the nighttime. I think this thing is going to be the fastest IPO to zero in history.